let's get started. Last session, we covered most of these topics. We covered up until here. We said that we are gonna start with a pure waveform and then we are gonna quantize it like what we are doing here. You take the waveform, you keep the sign. First, you normalize it so that it is from negative one to one. Then you pick a mu, let's say 255 is your mu. And then you take a log of the absolute value of your uh, signal at that point in time. And this was very similar to representing your signal. The formulas are very similar. These coefficients are different in Mele scale. So you're in simple words, you're taking a log of your signal. But then you can look at this mu law compounding transformation from different perspectives. And this has a lot of applications in signal processing. So it's not an idea from deep learning. And compounding here stands for compressing and expanding. It's like encoder decoder. But over there, you're compressing your signal, you're sending it, and then the receiver is going to expand it. And this is how you're going to uh, compress your signal. And this is going to help us quantize. And this is much better than doing 16-bit uh, integer quantization. Because over there, you're going to get 65,000. These are going to be the number of outputs from your softmax. And if you remember, softmax in the denominator has a summation. So you don't want to do a summation over all of these numbers each time that you're outputting a probability. So that's the main idea in terms of uh, if you do that quantization, you are going to be able to use uh, softmax. So you're going to treat your signal as a discrete signal, which is going to help you use softmax with only 256 possible values. The rest of it is convolutions about con causal convolutions because you don't want to look into the future and atrus convolutions because you want to increase your receptive field. You want to analyze more samples from your signal. We learned about gated activation units when we were doing convolutions for text. And then the rest of it is, should be pretty straightforward. You take your input, you push it through a causal convolution. You're going to have K layers of uh, these blocks that you're repeating one after another. The tan H and sigmoid here are going to give you your activation. You're going to have dilated convolutions here, a simple one by one convolution which is going to be point-wise, and then you're going to have a residual connection. Then you keep repeating. These are going to give you some skip connections. So you're outputting the result of each one of your layers. Sum them up, do a ReLU, one by one convolution, ReLU, one by one convolution, softmax, and then you're going to output 20, 256 numbers. And these are the probability for the next observation. Okay, any questions up until this point? It was a quick recap of what we covered last session. Okay, perfect. These generative models are gonna be more useful when you condition them on extra input. For instance, let's say you have an additional input, H, and for instance, this could be the identity of the speaker. For instance, this could be the identity of Obama or Trump or some other famous person and you want to mimic how they speak. So you're just gonna condition on their identity, which is a vector, okay? So you're gonna have data for each one of your speakers. You know their corresponding identity. The identities are integers, and we know that whenever you have an integer, you can use vector embeddings. This is what we have been doing for word vectors long time ago. So it's the same thing. The speaker identity is a vector that you can condition on. The other one is text-to-speech. This is the third time that we are seeing text-to-speech. Most of the topics that we covered was speech-to-text, which was a speech recognition. This is text-to-speech, and your input could be a text that you're conditioning on. And what's gonna change in your model is everything is gonna be the same as before, like what you have here. It's exactly the same formula, but now you're conditioning on H as well. But how we're gonna model it, how we're gonna write down your neural network, you can take H, you can multiply it by a matrix, and then that's gonna give you a vector. And you can add that vector to every single uh, signal that you have. Actually, these are encoded signals. 
So basically, for those of you who know Python and are using it, this is just the concept of broadcasting. So you just broadcast a vector to the size of your entire wave. For text, we know that text is usually, its length is usually smaller than speech. So how are we gonna do this addition over there? How are we gonna do local conditioning? Let's say this is your text. It's gonna have a lower sampling frequency than your audio signal. We're gonna take H, push it through a function, and that's gonna correct uh, the length of our audio signal such that Y is gonna have the same resolution as your audio signal, and then you can add them together. But how are we gonna do it? The idea is that you're gonna use a transposed convolution because now you need to increase the resolution. So a convolution, if you have a stride bigger than one, is gonna do uh, sampling. So it's gonna shrink your signal. We are gonna do transpose convolution to increase the size of the signal, the length of the signal, its resolution. And then once the resolution is fixed, we can uh, simply add them together. You first do a one by one convolution, the first operation F is going to deal with the length of your signal, length of your input. And this other convolution is, uh, because it's a sequence of vectors, it's going to correct the sizes of the vectors so that it can add these properly. Now they're going to have the same size. Okay, perfect. Let's look at the performance in terms of numbers when it comes to text to speech. Uh, and this is going to be a subjective score. It's not objective. So you are showing your speech to real human on something like Amazon Torque, and the human is scoring it of how natural this speech is on a scale from zero to five or from one to five. How natural is the generated speech? You do it for North American English and Chinese. Let's get the baseline first. If you have a human speaking, so this should be perfect because it's a human speaking, it's a native speaker in that corresponding language. So it should be perfect. But what you're doing is quantizing the speech of the human. And you have two options. One was this 16-bit integers, and the other one was this 8-bit mu law, because 256 is going to give you 8 bits. These are going to give you some baselines to work with. Basically, you are showing, you take the human speech, you quantize it and you show it to another human to score it from one to five. And these are the scores that you're getting on average plus the standard deviations, plus and minus. This is your baseline. And LSTM plus an RNN, it's a parametric model. So there is a classification that you make for, that you can make for text to speech. Some of them are parametric, some of them are concatenative. Usually the concatenative one are the hidden Markov model type of models, and the parametric ones are RNNs, LSTMs, et cetera, because they have parameters. These are those scores that you're gonna get for those types of models, and this is WaveNet. So you're closing the gap to human performance. Any questions? Is everything clear? Okay, perfect.